you graduate from Illinois, you go on to IMG. Mm -hmm. What made you want to get, first of all, what made you want to get into the field of representing players? Because I, I tried that man, for about a year. It's hey, hard. That's not an easy yeah. job, big dog. Yeah. yeah. yeah <laughs> athletes, no, are, well, athletes are big babies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you're a very, very big one. I could tell you that. So uh, more of a giant. The Yeah. Look, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm, uh, I've been, like I said, I've been doing this 29 years. All professions are tough. I, I, I know that. You, you, you know, you just you're not going to coast through life. You know, being in the in the in the sports management slash marketing business like I have been for so long, it it's and I know most businesses are. It's highly highly competitive because on the outside it's very sexy, right? Um, on the inside you can appreciate because you you've been an athlete at the highest level. It's a lot of grunt work. Um, yeah. And you got to make sure that you're willing to put in your time and that no task is uh, beneath you. Um, I'm still doing things now, 30 years into my job that I was doing as an intern 30 years ago. Uh, and you just, you, you have to understand nothing is ever beneath you. And, um, and so um, I wanted to, to answer, you know, to answer specifically your, your question, D, I, I, um, I knew I wanted to stay involved in sports. My, you know, we were a sports family growing up. It was just mom, dad, myself, and my sister. And, um, you know, my dad's no longer with us, but he, he taught me everything I knew about sports. We would, um, you know, growing up in Peoria, Illinois, I never missed a Bradley basketball game. Literally, I never missed a Bradley basketball wow. game until I went to until I went to school at University of Illinois. Um, I would go to every home game and I would listen to every away game on the radio with my dad. I mean, that's how passionate I was. So I knew I was going to stay involved in sports. Obviously, from what we've talked about, I certainly wasn't good enough to pursue a professional basketball career on the on the court. So. Um, I just wanted to stay involved. And, and I tell young people who ask me all the time now, what does that mean? There's so many different avenues you can get into when it comes to sports. Now I happen to go the agency route um, and plugged and, and, and put in my time, but um, I wanted to do something I was passionate about and something that I knew I would love rather than a job that felt like a job. And I was getting up begrudgingly for every day. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because that's actually one of the things uh, before I moved into the new position that I'm, I'm in now in development, I spent a lot of time in the inner city in Chicago, in my hometown. And I would talk to a lot of the kids and, you know, you, you know how it is. You're talking to kids and they're like, yeah, I'm going to the NBA. Yeah, I'm going to the NFL. Yes. And I used to always tell them, I'm like, all right, first of all, understand. And I was talking to this one kid, a quick story about him. And had, I'm talking to him and I'm like, yeah, I'm like, well, what position do you play? He was like, yeah, I play power forward. And I'm like, you play power forward. I'm like, oh, okay. I say, well, do you start on your high school team? No, no, I don't start on my high school team. I'm like the sixth man. I say, okay. I say, what about AAU? Do you play AAU with any of the teams? And, no, I haven't played AAU basketball just yet, but I'm going to the NBA. I said, let me ask you another question. He was like, yes, sir. I say, how many five, nine power forwards have you seen in the NBA? <laughs> <laughs> yeah and he was like and you could see this look on his face come and i was like I, and i'm not trying to crush your dream i was like but the chances of you making it to the nba really are slim and none there's not a lot of people that do the anthony davis and sprout you know eight right. inches you know right. overnight in summers it just right. it doesn't happen but you what what you said is exactly what i told him i was like recognize there's a lot of avenues to be in the sports world that does not depend on you playing. Oh, right. so maybe you need to give those things some thoughts and some ideas. And, you know, I walked away and, and I, I could see the kid's mind working. Now, unfortunately, I haven't seen him since. And with everything <laughs> and the way things are crazy in Chicago, I hope yeah. he feels one of those avenues and, and not the other way. So it's great to hear you say that. Coming from a basketball background, how would you end up in golf? Yeah, you know, again, I I wanted to get involved in sports, and I and I didn't. I feel like what you were saying, but you know, you didn't want to crush this young five nine person's dream. But but at the same time, you know, one of the things that my wife and I try to teach our three kids is let you know work hard, be realistic. 
like be realistic. My, my son, my son is a freshman at Illinois. He's, he's good AAU player. He's good high school player was two time captain of the varsity team, four year player on the varsity team. He was good. Mm-hmm. He was also five eleven, six foot and, you know, 150 pounds soaking wet. Um, so, uh, you know, when, when, when thinking about colleges, I said, your ceiling is either going and enjoying a D one school like I do, and maybe walking on one day or thinking D three, you got, you, you got no other, you're not, you're not going to play D one or D two. You, you got D three, maybe. And, and you, you know, enjoy or enjoy college and maybe walk on when you're a sophomore, junior, senior, whatever it is. So teaching realism to young people these days is not the easiest um, task um, because it's not a trait that comes easy to them. Um, So I, I I was, you know, after graduating law school, I had to make a decision, take the law job that was going to pay me significantly more or take the, um, the, the, the sports agency job that was going to pay me significantly less but something that I was pretty passionate in. And that's what I decided. And when I took the job at IMG in 1992, um, the job that they had was in golf and it was in women's golf and it was recruiting and representing women golfers. I did not know much about either, didn't know much about the sport, did not know much about, about the specifics of women's golf, but I thought it was doing something that I could be passionate about and I was going to work as hard as I could and let my path take me where it did. And 30 years later, I feel very fortunate that I, I actually made a hard decision to take love over money. Well, I, I'll tell you this. You, you did a heck of a job at IMG. Thanks. It was, no. it was a fun training ground. K- Carrie Webb ain't no pushover. No, no, she Anna was, uh, said, ain't no pushover. Yeah, no, no. You, done, <laughs> you, you, you and I have talked before. You've done your, you've done your homework. It was, no, you know, I am G and look, I'm very fortunate. I, I own a company here in New York um, with a couple of my business partners and 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 we're we're having the time of our life. I'm I'm enjoying my job today more than I ever have. And that's something after 29 years and 53 years of age. Um, but I, I could never complain about IMG as a training ground back in the day. It, it brought me to where I am today. I left at the proper time in 2010, 11, and, 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 and here now. 